Welcome guys. Now one of my friends has got $100,000 as a spare cash with him, a rich guy. And, and he asked me where he can invest this money. What are his options? I told him he can buy treasury bonds, okay, which are risk-free. Uh, and he can get about 3% per annum. And he wasn't very interested in that because he needs more. Then I suggested bank deposits. He was very against depositing the money in the banks because central banks may change the interest rates up and down. And he is really not interested in the banks. Then I suggested he can invest the money in a stock or he can put the investment in a business or a company or he can buy some properties or cryptocurrencies. Now, when I suggested him, these are the options that he has, he kind of asked me what stocks are better to invest and how much he can expect as a return for his investment. Now, what should I answer him? Because it's not a straightforward answer because we have so many stocks to choose from. You can choose Apple, you can choose Google, you can choose some technology company. Investment in different stocks can give you different returns. But then my friend said, without knowing how much he's going to get back, he's not going to invest in stocks. Now, if this is the question that you have for yourself too, then you have landed on the right video. This is what we're going to learn today. See a PM is nothing but capital asset pricing model. Okay, that is a big term. In short words, CAPM is nothing but, it's a framework, it's a theory that tells us how much you can expect or how much you deserve to invest your money. Okay, so what it is telling you is your expectations for your investment. That is what about CAPM is. Let's take this example. Let me just delete what's there on the screen. So let's take this example. Let's say this is you. Let's say you are my friend here. This is you, an investor. Okay, just, and this is your investment, right? Now, if you have to invest in stocks or a company or any property or a cryptocurrency or a treasury bond, you should have certain expectations. You should know what you should deserve, what you deserve for putting your money at risk, right? The lower the risk, the lower the return. The higher the risk, higher the return. If you invest your money in treasury bonds, right? It is risk-free. Why is it risk-free? Because if a treasury bond is saying you're gonna get 3% return on your investment, that's for sure you're getting 3% return. But for some people, 3% return on the investment is not okay. For example, if you have $1,000 and if you're getting 3% return, that means you're getting $30. You won't be interested in that. It's a different story for people having billions and billions of dollars, right? 3% makes sense for them because on a volume, they're going to get a lot of money. But for some people, 3% isn't enough. For bank interest is more or less the same. Some, people, some banks offer 4%, some banks offer less than that, things like that. But what are the options? The, the options are putting the money in the stocks, the putting the money in the company or properties or crypto. Now, when we're talking about CAPM, right? We're not saying you have to choose between bank deposits or you have to choose between stocks or you have to choose between companies. We're not offering where you should invest. What we are offering is if you pick a particular asset, let us say a stock. Let's say you picked Apple stock. Now, what CAPM says is, what is the return you can expect for your investment for choosing Apple stock? Let's say if you're choosing Google stock, then CAPM will say what return you should expect for choosing Google stock. Similarly, if you're going to choose to invest your money in a particular company, then CAPM will tell you what you should expect to invest in that particular company given there is some history available for that company. 
you may not be able to use CAPM on a brand new company because you do not have historical information about the earnings of the company. Okay, that's a different ball game. But what CAPM tells us is we have to choose a particular asset and on that asset, what is that we deserve to get back for our investment is what CAPM is going to tell. Okay. So let me move on to the next page. On this page, you see some text written here. This is the text I just spoke about, but I'm just keeping it here because I wanted to give you this presentation for free for your personal use. You can find the link in the description below. You can download this. Let's look at this screen. This screen is interesting. Okay, you may see a couple of terms like capital budgeting, discounted cash flow, WAC and CAPM. Now, if you're watching this CAPM video, I assume that you already have heard these terms. Okay. I made a video on capital budgeting, which was highly successful. We have about what 750,000 plus views on that. One of the questions that came out of that video was, you know, how did you compute discounted cash flow? Okay. Now, for me to explain how I computed discounted cash flow, we need to understand a concept called WAC because WAC is something that we have to compute to come to discounted cash flow value. Now, I would make a video on WAC, but I really want to explain all the concepts before I jump on to explaining WAC. For us to compute WAC, we really need to understand different asset pricing models. CAPM is one of the asset pricing models. There are other popular pricing models like Markovich pricing model and so on and so forth. I'm going to make videos on those pricing models too, but this video is specifically focused on CAPM. For CAPM, we also need to understand a concept called beta. Okay, there is a concept called beta, which is consumed in CAPM. We would be seeing this beta in the next slides, but this is how it is linked. You need to understand what beta is. Then using beta, you can compute CAPM. Using CAPM, you can compute WAC. This WAC is going to be your discounted cash flow. Using discounted cash flow, you can compute your capital budgeting numbers. Okay. So if you're wondering what is there here on the left side of the screen, it's nothing but all the corporate finance topics which are really important. I'm going to make videos on them. And the special reason why I kept it here on the screen is because if you see under banking, you have investment banking, right? In investment banking, you would find a lot of investment bankers who do a lot of valuation on the companies and the stocks, okay? So these all techniques that you see on the right are going to be used by investment bankers a lot. And also the research analyst and also people in the trading services do use all these techniques. And especially the asset management institutions, right, wherein they create certain portfolios with a mix of certain stocks, certain investment in bonds, certain investment in some other areas. They do use these techniques, CAPM techniques, WAC, discounted cash flow, so on and so forth to come up with different products that they can serve their clients with. That's the intent why I have kept here. Okay, these are all really very hot topics in the market. If you can get a job in any of these areas, trust me, you're going to get big bucks. Now, let me move on to the next screen. The most important part for CAPM is to understand the concept. You may be worried. It may look scary to see this formula, but the moment I explain what this formula is about, it makes all sense. And you don't even have to remember the formula. With the common logic itself, you should be able to recollect how to compute CAPM. On the formula here, you see basically four components are here. One is RA, which is nothing but CAPM. It's basically your return on investment. It should have been RI. Some people write it RI. I prefer to write it RI because it makes sense. Return on investment. And you see RF. RF is nothing but risk-free. So whatever you mean by risk-free, risk-free is nothing but let's say if I'm investing my money in any, any place, right? There is a certain risk that I always have to bear. If I'm investing in stock, it comes with a risk. The stock may go up or the stock may come down. If it goes up, well and good. If it comes down, there is a risk that I have to bear. But what is risk-free? Risk-free is nothing but I do not have to take any risk. For example, you see here treasury bonds. I mentioned risk-free. Treasury bonds are issued by governments. Now, when government says you're going to get 3% on your investment, right? That means for sure you're going to get that 3%. That's what we're talking about when we say risk-free. So 
why we are taking risk free i'm just going to explain in a moment and you see beta here right beta have made a complete video explaining in and outs of beta using real life charts on google apple and uh, microsoft comparing them with the stock market returns but to tell you in simple words what beta is beta is nothing but for example you have your overall stock market right if the overall stock market has moved up let's say in the last five years by 100 percent right how much did your particular stock move up the one that you chose for example if we are choosing apple for our investment right if this overall stock market has gone up by 100 percent how much percentage the apple has gone up by let's say apple has gone up by 121 percent in this case our beta for apple is going to be 1.2 and the beta for stock market is going to be one beta for entire stock market is always going to be one now what we're going to do is against this value of one we're going to compute the beta number for our stock now in the same way if i take the beta value for the google company right if the stock market has gone up by 100 percent in the last five years let's say google has increased only by 110 percent okay then the beta value for google is going to be 1.1 whereas stock market beta is always going to be one okay likewise we can have beta values less than one two for example microsoft if stock market has gone up by 100 percent microsoft may have only gone up by 93 percent then the beta value for microsoft is going to be 0.93 percent that's the brief explanation about beta but the pros and cons how the beta is calculated what are the different advantages of doing beta analysis I have made a separate video please do take time out to watch that video it will add to your understanding because these videos that i'm producing are logically sequenced so it makes complete sense for you to go ahead and take a look at my videos and try and get to know how things work in corporate finance that's about beta the one you see here is rm okay rm is nothing but market risk m stands for market r stands for risk what we're saying is we need to understand what is the overall market risk that's going to be. For example, if we are investing our money for one year, what is the market risk going to be? How much the market is going to go up or how much the market is going to come down? That's the risk of the market that we have to assess. And then you have RF again, which is nothing but risk free. The same RF here. RF is being consumed two times here. You see here on the top, you see a bar, right? You see it for RA, you also see it for RM. What we're saying here is because we are trying to predict the return on investment, it's just an estimate. When you see bar on any number, it's just an estimate. That means we're not 100% sure that it's going to be that way. But on RF, there is no bar. If I delete it, like there is no bar. You only have bar for RA and RM because these are the estimates that we're taking to compute the CAPM value. CAPM again in itself is an estimate, okay? It's not certain that, you know, the number that you're computing is gonna be turning out exactly the way you're predicting, okay? There is nobody in this world who can predict exactly how the market is going to be turning out. But it's good, you can at least get to know how much return you can expect, okay? So this is the return of on your investment, this is the risk free rate the beta i just explained about beta is different for different stocks for apple if it is 1.2 for google it is 1.1 microsoft 0.93 and the good part is you don't have to really compute beta you can just go to google and type in apple stock beta you get the number you can just plug in that number if you are choosing let's say we are trying to invest in apple and we also are also trying to invest in google if we want to see what is our CAPM number for investing in Apple and CAPM number for investing in Google, let's compute that right now. Let's take 1.21 for Apple and 1.1 for Google. Now, written on investment is something that we're trying to compute. Risk-free, we will take treasury bonds interest rate as risk-free because if we are going to invest in treasury bond, usually 3% is what we are going to get on treasury bonds. Okay, so we're going to take risk-free as 3% for Apple for google we are going to take three percent is going to be same there beta 
is different for Apple and different for Google. So beta is 1.21 here. For Google, it's 1.1. RM is what is the market risk. Now, this is a number that we have to compute. Different finance professionals use different pricing models or different techniques to come up with the market risk numbers. You can find the market risk numbers by doing Google. If not, the simple thing to do is take the last 10 years S&P numbers or the index numbers, take the average of the last 10 years for your index and you get to know how much return the stock market is giving overall. Let's say the stock market is giving you a return of 12% per annum on an average for the last 10 years. Take that as a number. Use that as a number because there is no way that we can compute being normal professionals, you know, predicting exactly what the market is going to be turning out. But you can definitely go ahead and do the Google search and you may get to know some numbers. Let's say we are using 12% as a market risk, okay, 12%. Now we have to remove RF again here. RF is nothing but 3%. Again, we are using 3%. Now this will tell us the return for Apple and the return for Google. How much percentage we can get back as a return for our investment. So if I do this math here, right, 3% plus 1.21 into 9%. So whatever the number that we get for Apple here is basis this calculations, right? 1.21 into 9, how much is going to be? 9, 18, 1, 10.89 plus 3. 13.89 percent is what you can expect for your investment in Apple. Whereas for Google, it's going to be 3% plus 1.1 into 9. So 9.9 .9 plus 3, 12.9. So you can expect 12.9% as a return for investing in Google stock. You can expect 13.89% as a return for investing in Apple stock. That's what CAPM is about. In the next screen, this is the same formula. We just written it like this. Instead of the bar, these guys are writing as E, which is expected. RF, you see there is no bar. Beta is a beta on your investment. E is again the expectation, okay? Because we're saying RM here. We're just writing bar. This formula and the formula that we wrote before is the same formula. So I hope it is clear, guys. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Uh, I'll be sharing this entire slide with you. The link is going to be in the description below. Feel free to go ahead and download this presentation. And it's just not this particular slide. There are other videos that I've made. Please do take time out to have a look at them. And the moment you go to download this particular slide right you'll also find other folders wherein you can download slides for those videos that i've made but i would appreciate if you could take time and watch those videos to get the complete understanding and holistic understanding of all finance related concepts i'm going to produce more and more videos i'm going to cover entire corporate finance and uh, this is going to be really helpful to you guys i wish you all the best and uh, thank you for watching this video if you have not subscribed i would request you please do consider subscribing and it would be a privilege for me to have you as one of my subscribers thank you again bye